Right now, a look at a referendum on Madison ballots next week that aims to bolster con continuity on the city's common council. Plus, how students got their chance to ask questions of the candidates for the Madison School Board today. And new details emerge as a woman is charged after a newborn infant was found dead in a field in Whitewater. That's all coming up on News 3 Now at 10. Thank you for joining us. First tonight, we are keeping an eye on the forecast. Our weather team has issued an alert day for this Friday. Now, Friday is also the last day of March, which has already been a record-setting month for snowfall. So will we be adding to that total, or is it something else? Julian Seawright with our first warned forecast. Well, at this rate, we might see a little bit more snowfall added to it, but that's not really the big story for us. It's going to be severe storms. That's right. Spring is here by the time we get into our Friday. So let's get right into our first warn alert day. Right now, we're looking for severe weather threats to roll into our Friday afternoon and evening hours. High winds, hail, heavy rain, and a few tornadoes are going to be all the threats that are possible from any of the storms that stir up by the time we get into that timeline. And some of it could even leak into our Friday nights, but we are looking for the threat to start to dampen as a cold front rolls its way through, but then that's when we're looking for a change into snow. So we do have a lot going on for us, but the areas of concern are going to be areas mainly south of Madison, but all of southern Wisconsin, as you can see from our severe weather outlook, is under some form of severe weather threats. We have marginal risk north of Dane County, and for Dane County and areas to the south are under a slight risk. A few parts, which is mainly to the southwest and the southwestern parts of Lafayette and for Grant County, are under the level three out of five risk, which is the enhanced risk for seeing severe weather. So that's where we're going to be watching our eye come Friday afternoon and evening for these cells to start to pop up for us. But this is what we're watching for. So this is really going to be the early afternoon hours where we can see some storms really starting to pop off as temperatures really start to peak, especially by the time we get into our Friday evening. Friday night as a cold front rolls its way through, we're looking at a change over into some snow that will start to blanket much of the areas, but not too much snowfall is going to be expected from that system. We'll talk more about the timing of these storms coming up in a few moments as tomorrow's going to be around 44 degrees. But until then, that's you guys. Julian, thank you. We are less than a week away now from the spring election. And in Madison, a referendum about the Common Council will appear at the bottom of your ballot that may have you scratching your head. But as Arman Rahman found, an outgoing alder says it is important to address the high turnover of fellow council members each election cycle. Eric and Charlotte, next Tuesday, voters will elect new faces to about half of Madison's alder positions. That's on trend when you look at the past few election cycles, which is why one alder is sponsoring a referendum to bring some continuity to the council. The past three or four elections have had about 10 of the 20 council members not returned for whatever reason. District 3 uh, Alder Eric Paulson uh, says that massive uh, turnover on Madison's uh, Common Council uh, can make it harder for new alders to learn their roles. The continuity is really important because you learn a lot from your fellow alders. Obviously city staff is there to help you and, and, and bring you up to speed, but there's a whole lot of it that you just learn from everyone else. That's why he crafted this referendum, which can be confusing. You don't have a lot of space on the ballot to sort of explain everything, uh, and you got to be meet some legal terms. Basically, Paulson believes that since alders currently serve for two years, then those terms should be staggered, allowing four or five new council members at each election instead of eight or ten, if the votes go that way. If the voters who have the right to throw the bums out, um, but it's probably a bad idea to throw us all out at once, and so this makes it so um, at maximum, only half the council will change over at any given year. If the referendum passes, it'll take effect in 2025, when alders of even-numbered districts will be elected for a special one-year term. In 2026, they'll be elected for the next two years. Alders of odd-numbered districts will be elected in 2025 for two years, and then again in 2027. Uh, the Madison School Board is already staggered, so Madison already always has a spring election. Dane County judges are already staggered, so there's always an election in April. There will always be a reason uh, to go to the polls in April. Now this referendum is binding, so if majority votes yes, it will take effect in 2025. Polls close Tuesday at 8 p.m. Thank you, Armand. And a reminder to see what's on your ballot for next Tuesday, you can head to myvote.wi.gov and all you need to do is put in your address. Now, well, one of the races on the ballot in Madison, school board. The three candidates for the Madison School Board participated in a forum today, this time answering questions from students. Braden Ross has more. So it was really nice to come out and see these guys talking about things that really affect us directly. Wednesday, a forum for Madison School Board candidates with a twist. 
Almost every question came from a student. I like forums where the students ask the questions. I want to hear their points of view. It can be really popular for decision makers, like you say, to say, oh, well, this is what the experts say, or these people are the real experts. And I don't believe that. I fundamentally believe that students, staff, and families have expertise in schools. They asked the three candidates questions about everything from school safety. But there is a discussion going on on resource officers. To special education programs. One thing that I wonder about is the special education caseloads. To driver's ed. It needs to be brought back. The forum was hosted by Operation Fresh Start, a Madison nonprofit job training program for young adults, many of whom say traditional school just didn't work for them. First coming out here, I had a bad experience with school, so I wasn't really in the right mindset with school. OFS really changed my perspective on learning, so coming here and listening to them talk really opened my eyes. Now they're hoping to make it better for those who come next. And letting them listen to us and the helping ear, they're going to probably take some of the things that we said and productive and put them in schools so they can help people like us in the future. So I kind of wanted to relay the message to them, like, we just need more resources. And I hope they took our feedback. Now, there are two Madison school board seats up for election on April 4th. Current board member Nikki Vandermeulen is running uncontested to fill one of them. The other seat will go to either former West High School teacher Blair Mosner Feltham or former Madison City Council candidate Badri Lankella. Britton, thank you. And for more complete election coverage, check out our social media pages and, of course, channel3000.com. We'll also have extensive election day coverage on air next Tuesday. Next tonight, the state DOJ has wrapped up its investigation into a deadly shooting at a quick trip gas station on Madison's east side last month. Now, those findings have been turned over to the Dane County District Attorney for review. Who will decide whether charges should be filed? Back on February 27th, police say 39-year-old Justin Kopmeyer, who was a homicide suspect, was spotted near the gas station. When confronted, Kopmeyer and one police officer fired their weapons. A second officer also fired a taser. Kopmeyer was later found dead in the Quick Trip bathroom from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. In Whitewater, 38-year-old Santos Asusena Caceres Cruz is being held on a $10,000 cash bail. Today, she was charged with neglecting a child resulting in death and hiding a corpse. Investigators say it was her baby who was found dead in a field earlier this month, wrapped in a plastic bag inside a cardboard box. Police say the baby's body was discovered about two days later. She's slated to be back in court on April 4th for a preliminary hearing. New tonight, two young children ages four and six have been seriously hurt after falling off a cliff at Governor Dodge State Park. The Iowa County Sheriff's Office says the kids had fallen from a cliff near Bluff Point Trail around 2.15 this afternoon. They say the four-year-old child fell around 80 feet while a six-year-old child Fell around 20 feet onto a ledge. One child was flown to a hospital, the other taken by ambulance. The latest information we have on their condition, the Sheriff's Department says they have serious injuries. Developing tonight, 86-year-old Pope Francis in the hospital tonight with a respiratory infection. Vatican officials say it is not COVID-19. They say he has had some difficulty breathing in recent days and will spend the next few days receiving treatment at a nearby hospital in Rome. As of now, the Vatican has canceled the Pope's audiences through Friday. A vigil tonight in Nashville for the six people killed in Monday's school shooting. First Lady Jill Biden was in attendance. Today, we're also learning more about those victims. Friends of Katherine Kuntz, the head of the Christian Elementary School, are remembering the beloved educator as a hero. Nine-year-old students Evelyn Dickhouse, William Kinney, and Hallie Scruggs died in the shooting, along with substitute teacher Cynthia Peake. Custodian Mike Hill, a father of seven, worked at the school for 14 years. Even after this latest shooting, Congress shows little appetite for breaking the impasse over gun control. Tennessee Republicans shifted the conversation away from guns altogether. What this does is highlight uh, some of the mental health issues, the mental health crisis we have in this country. The tragedy that happened in my state was the result of the depraved person, somebody very, very sick. In the face of Republican opposition to any measure restricting access to guns, House Democrats called for Congress to put people over politics. 
Two Democrats introduced a bill to fund research into the causes of gun violence alongside previous school shooting survivors. Firearms have become the leading cause of death for children in the U.S., leading President Biden to also renew pressure to Congress to ban assault weapons. Still ahead of 10, your updated forecast as we keep an eye on Friday's storm. But first, how a group of sailors from Wisconsin helped conduct a rescue mission on the Pacific Ocean. Stay with us. Volkswagen Atlas with best in class third row leg room. Visit your local Volkswagen dealer for 4.9% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Atlas or Atlas Cross Sport. Oh, the weather. What's the chance of rain tomorrow? Ooh, 80%. I make it rain. I make it rain. <laughs> Speaking of making it rain, at Ho Chunk Gaming Madison, we have an average 95% payout, which leads you to more chances of playing longer and more chances to win big. Play longer, win more, chances are you're gonna like it. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. There were severe health complications with my baby when I was pregnant. We made the decision to have an abortion so our daughter wouldn't suffer. Dan Kelly doesn't believe that women should even have that freedom. On the Supreme Court, Dan Kelly will uphold the criminal ban on abortion. Someone you love might struggle with a pregnancy like I did. And that's why we can't have an extremist like Dan Kelly on the Supreme Court. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Non-drowsy Claritin knocks out symptoms from over 200 allergens without knocking you out. Feel the clarity and make today the most wonderful time of the year. Live Claritin clear. Come to Slumberland and get 20% off our beautiful new furniture and decor during our spring spruce up event. We've got fresh new looks, like sleek new upholstery for your living area, plus extra discounts on recliners, patio, Sealy mattresses, and sectionals, including our new super versatile modular sectional. Get an extra 20% off Slumberland low prices during our spring spruce up event right now at Slumberland Furniture. And check out our easy new mattress rating system to get you in your perfect bed. Need life insurance? Select Quote found Jacob 40, a $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. And Select Quote found his wife Wendy, a $500,000 policy for only $17 a month. Select Quote, we shop, you save. Why are there two extra seats? I know, Uncle Dane and his giant beard. The Volkswagen Atlas, with best in class third row leg room. Visit your local Volkswagen dealer for 4.9% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Atlas or Atlas Cross Sport. On the Jennifer Hudson Show. Who backstage, Jen? Method Man. He is fine. <laughs> Julie Bowen isn't the only one excited about Method Man and Lorenz Tate. Ladies, calm down. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. The DNA of four former and late presidents will be sent into space. Celestic, a space burial company, is sending the symbolic remains of George Washington, Dwight Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, and Ronald Reagan on its Enterprise flight. This special launch was fittingly announced back on February 20th, which is President's Day. And if rockets aren't your thing, here's a new car option if you can afford it. This is the Lamborghini Revuelto, the company's first hybrid. It has three electric motors, a V12 gasoline engine. That combination gives drivers a whopping 13 different driving modes from which to choose. The Italian manufacturer says the Revuelto can produce 1,000 horsepower, no price point just yet has been revealed. It is expected to be north of a half a million dollars. Well, two Wisconsin men sailing across the Pacific say they had a life-changing experience and made lifelong friends when they got involved in a rescue of boaters whose vessel had capsized because of a whale. Allison Brunner has the story. Mark Moriarty from Muskego set sail with his son-in-law, who's been sailing for decades. They were on his boat, the Rolling Stones, in early March. It was supposed to be a routine trip across the Pacific with friends and family from Wisconsin. It was just, you know, a, a routine 21-day crossing of the Pacific Ocean on the sailboat. Um, 
which I guess people do all the time. This is the first time I did it. However, halfway through the trip, they got a message from a friend talking about four people who needed to be rescued after a whale sank their boat. He got a message from a buddy of his that was actually 800 miles in front of us that said, hey, you should check this out because I think you're in the same neighborhood. The Wisconsinites quickly changed course and started the rescue mission. So we responded immediately to the ant throttle off the engine. So we were flying to go get these guys, but we were 65 miles away. And this em em emergency, you know, quick response rescue took nine hours for us to get to that. Moriarty sharing this video that yeah, captures the seconds leading up to the rescue. We have four people in a um, small life raft in a dinghy. They're both capsized, I think, uh, because of some whale incident. We'll have to find out. Take the cable feed. <laughs> and we were triangulating where they were uh, when it went down and the direction that the currents were taking and the winds. And so we were using a lot of technology. And we kind of made a beeline towards where we thought they were going to be. Uh, and it turns out we hit it pretty close. Moriarty credits the crew of the sunken rain dancer for their preparedness. That beacon light was a, a godsend. Then it was a question of how do we do the rescue because we've never done this before. About an hour after spotting the crew, they got them aboard and gave them a Wisconsin welcome. So we made sure that they had something to eat. We figured out some dry clothes. A moment Moriarty will never forget. Turns out just crossing the Pacific with my son-in-law would be a moment I'd never forget. And then, and then Jeffrey and typically ends up uh, ratcheting up and, and making the experience even even bigger. And he did this time too. Nine days later, they arrived back on land from a trip that was anything but normal. And it turned out to be the kind of a life-changing event for us. So it was just fun to get to understand their stories and and now create this friendship that will endure for probably forever. Moriarty is retired after working for Wisconsin-based Rockwell Automation for more than 30 years. His son-in-law is continuing his plan to sail around the world. Well, looking ahead, a shorter journey here. The Merrimack Ferry preparing to open for the season, but the DOT says a set date has not yet been announced. In an interview today, a spokesperson says they expect the ferry to open in the next week or two. After dealing with some mechanical issues last year, the DOT says it is working to make sure the vessel is fully ready to go before opening it to the public. And here's Julian Seawright, who is keeping an eye on the forecast. Yeah, I love how you just kind of throw that in there. Just, mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's right. So we have a first one <laughs> alert day in the forecast because later into the week, more active weather is for us. So let's talk about it. The details and the time. Well, Friday afternoon and Friday evening is what we're going to be watching for us here in southern Wisconsin because we are going to be looking at a storms that could be firing off hail, heavy rain, and on top of it, a few tornadoes and strong winds can't be thrown out either from these storms that are going to be sweeping throughout much of southern Wisconsin. Now, we've had plenty of consistency to see that these storms are going to be looking to really impact us during that time frame. So let's go ahead and walk through what we're going to be expecting. So our severe weather outlook, all of southern Wisconsin is under some form of severe weather threat. Marginal for our friends to the north, that's one out of five. For us here in Dane County and to the south, two out of five, that's a slight risk. And then for parts of Grant County and Lafayette County are under enhanced risk, level three out of five. So our areas to the west is where we're gonna be watching for any squall lines that are gonna be firing off some storms that could potentially be not just strong but severe. So let's walk through what we're going to be expecting. Overnight, quiet. Heading into tomorrow morning, still quiet. Just rather cold temperatures into the lower 20s. Afternoon hours, may see some showers just west of Dane County. Wind speed is going to keep things mild. And then as we get into around 5 o'clock, expect more showers to be widespread. And our friends to the north could potentially see a bit of some snow or at least some mixing of rain. Not looking for too much in terms of accumulation of that. But really, Thursday night is what we're going to start to see things get a bit hairy. Overnight hours, firing off some thunderstorms, especially around 3 o'clock. And then we're looking at a break and potentially around five could see another round of hearing some rumblings. Now, this is not where we're going to be expecting too much in terms of severe storms. And then it's quiet throughout much of our Friday morning. 
Heading into lunchtime, as temperatures start to warm up, it's going to be fuel for us to see some of those storms starting to fire off by the time we get into our early afternoon. So around 5 o'clock, the timing of this is what we're going to be watching for, a squall line to start to roll its way in. Starting off between Prairie du Chien, Basquebelle, Platteville, La Crosse, and Viroqua, this is the time to really start to pay attention of where you're at because we could start to see the squall line move its way throughout southern Wisconsin and starting to bring in storms that could be, once again, strong and or severe. High winds are going to be expected around here around 35 to even 40 to 55 miles per hour as potential. And this was going to continue throughout much of our evening hours. Now, as we get into the late parts of the night, we have a cold front rolling through. So once the storms are done, we're looking at a batch of some snow that will be welcoming us by the time we get into our Saturday morning. Now, we are looking for an abundance of rainfall throughout much of southern Wisconsin. Could be close to two inches of rain from the entirety of this event. Now, in terms of snow, not so much. Looking for about nah, less than an inch. Trace amounts, but areas north of Dane County could see a bit more. So here's our three things we'll need to know is that it's another active end to our work week. Some showers and windy conditions for Thursday, windy and then storms for Friday and Saturday. Some early snow is going to be possible. Some minor accumulations, but then once we get into Sunday, it's going to be quiet again and then heading into next week. 50s and more active weather. This time, hopefully it's not severe, but we do have thunderstorms in our forecast. And coming up in sports, a performance of the ages by Drew Holiday. The numbers he put up against the Pacers are next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. How much does it cost to talk to Gruber Lofses after a serious accident? It's free. Yes, free, as in it won't cost you anything to speak with us. There's never a fee until we win your case. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Get hy V butter for $2.48 and hy V bacon for $2.99 at hy V. That's hy V butter for just $2.48 and hy V bacon for just $2.99. Thursday only and only at hy V. On abortion rights, do you want extremist Dan Kelly holding the gavel? Kelly wants abortion banned even in cases of rape, incest, and the health of the mother. He'll uphold the 1849 criminal abortion law that allows doctors and nurses to be jailed for performing abortions. And he'll strip women of their freedom to make their own decision on abortion. So don't give Dan Kelly a gavel with your vote. He's just too extreme. Are you waking up in the morning with a sore jaw, headaches, maybe even ringing in your ears, all because you're grinding and clenching your teeth at night? That's exactly what was going on with me. That's when I found this, the Brux Night Guard. Now the Brux Night Guard redirects the bite force away from the back teeth, reducing jaw pain while still protecting the teeth. This unique design is what makes Brux Night Guard different from all other traditional grind guards. Go to bruxnightguard.com and order yours today. There are so many things we take for granted. So many things. And along with them, sometimes we take the people who depend on them for their survival for granted too. The elderly, disabled, the veterans, people on limited and fixed incomes, or folks that lost jobs in sectors hardest hit during the pandemic. How can they survive with record increases in their basic cost of living? Some people just can't come back. And through no fault of their own, they're being left behind, struggling to keep their heat, water, and power on. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our heat, Water and power providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. He brutally raped her, repeatedly. I spent endless nights plagued by nightmares. My bedroom door is barricaded, I was so afraid. But Judge Protozewitz ignored her pleas, let the rapist off easy, and now he's back on the streets. When you don't know where your attacker is, and he is everywhere. He is every sound in the night. Tell Judge Protozewicz, stop failing victims and stop protecting criminals. 
this Friday. One day only. Earn a 50 cent high V fuel saver for every $50 you spend. That's a 50 cent fuel saver for every $50. Friday only. And only at High V. Gruber Law Offices. Gruber Law Offices. Gruber Law Offices. For over 35 years, Gruber Law Offices has had one goal to provide top-notch legal services. One call, one call, one call, one call, that's all. Luke Fickle was a bad man on the football field. In high school, he was a two-time first-team All-Ohio defensive tackle. And then in college at Ohio State, he started 50 straight games at nose guard. So when it comes to coaching, well, the D-line is like a magnet to him. He's drawn to it. And at spring practice, the Badgers can kind of feel it. The first day, the head coach was working with them specifically. And this group of defensive linemen appreciates that from a fellow line mate. You understand our pain, man. You understand, you understand, <laughs> he understands a nose tackle or a D tackle, man. You got to hold on them three tacks, you know. You got to be strong, be physical and everything. And, you know, Coach Fickle, he prides himself on the D-line, though, you know. Like, this guy cares about the D-line. And he knows it starts up front. Like, if the D-line starts off physical and everything and set the tone, it's going to be a long night for the other team. So, and Coach Fickle believes in that wholeheartedly. Happy, happy opening day eve. In less than 24 hours, the Brewers' season will be off in full swing. Corbin Burns will take the mound for game of one of 162 for the Brew Crew. And like last season, Milwaukee will begin the year at Wrigley Field. And no matter if it's your first opening day or your 10th, the butterflies and nerves will be there. And that feeling of the first game of the season, well, it never gets old. Once you get your first at bat over with, first inning in the field, over with, you kind of settle back down and realize it's just baseball. It's the same thing you've been doing your entire life, but opening day is opening day. No matter how many times you do it, there's still an element of um, nerves involved. We're getting ready for a workout at a major league stadium. We're getting ready to, as a team, you know, take take our first trip. Um, and so the excitement of the, of the season is here. Bucks visiting the Pacers, and it's a trip Drew Holiday won't forget. That man was cooking in Indy. First half, he steps back and splashes home the triple. 27 points in the first half from him. Holiday finished with a career high of 51. Then Giannis put the Pacers to sleep. The spin, the slam, and then the stare. A 38-17 and 12 triple double. Bucks win by 13. And after a fantastic freshman season, Matty Wilkie is no longer a Wisconsin Badger. The Beaver Dam standout has put her name in the transfer portal after averaging nearly 12 points per game. Last season, Wilkie started 29 games for Marissa Mosley and set a program freshman record with 61 made threes. She's the third Badger to transfer in the last three weeks. We're back after this. third row legroom. Visit your local Volkswagen dealer for 4.9% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Atlas or Atlas Cross Sport. Community is helping each other. Making sure your neighbor is taken care of. At Lake Ridge Bank, community is who we are. We take pride in being a community bank, strengthening relationships and investing in the places we come from. It's why we are who we are. Lake Ridge Bank. Go far, go together. On abortion rights, do you want extremist Dan Kelly holding the gavel? Kelly wants abortion banned even in cases of rape, incest, and the health of the mother. He'll uphold the 1849 criminal abortion law that allows doctors and nurses to be jailed for performing abortions and he'll strip women of their freedom to make their own decision on abortion. So don't give Dan Kelly a gavel with your vote. He's just too extreme. 
Right now at Planet Fitness, you can get that big fitness energy for just $1 down, $10 a month. No commitment, cancel any time. It's a great deal, and our 17 million members agree. You can say that again. Uh, okay, as I said, you can join for just $1 down, $10 a month. What a deal! So turn your low energy into big fitness energy and enjoy tons of equipment in a clean and spacious judgment-free zone to get that post-workout glow. So get going, or shall I say glowing? <laughs> Join for just $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. Cancel any time. Deal ends Wednesday, April 5th. To everyone who believes in tradition, come enjoy a few of ours from Wisconsin. People in Wisconsin love a good fish fry. Really love. And we love sharing it with guests everywhere. At Culver's, we still batter our North Atlantic cod by hand to order. And we cook it to a crispy, golden perfection just for you. For you. For you. So it's crispy outside, flaky inside. Let us take care of you. With some homegrown traditions we were raised on. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. <laughs> Channel 3000 Plus. Watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Finally tonight, NASA says the weather is changing on Jupiter and Uranus. These images from the Hubble Space Telescope show Jupiter's great red spot living up to the name. NASA says it is a gigantic storm big enough to swallow the Earth, but they say it's shrinking now. As for Uranus, its north pole looks like a large off-white circle, a comparison of photos from 2014 and last year shows that northern cap is getting bigger and brighter. Julian's totally like, mm-hmm, that's, that's accurate. Julian's now with more, for not just the forecast here, but also on Uranus and Jupiter. <laughs> We're doing a whole bunch of st space dives right now. <laughs> but take a look at our 10-day forecast, making it more local for us. What's happening is we may see some showers in tomorrow afternoon and evening hours, but really our eyes are on Friday. It's going to be mild, and our alert day for severe thunderstorm potential is really rather high for us. Julian, thank you, and thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.